worship on this beautiful morning, a special welcome to our guests and visitors. I see more people got expelled from the north and the northwest. It is good to see you. We also welcome our uh, online service, our live stream service people that are worshiping with us. I'm sure that includes many, many people as we look at the numbers that are checking in. We appreciate that you're with us and at least able to have a worship experience. Note also the announcements in the bulletin, the flowers placed by Terry and Judy Mann in celebration of their 55th wedding anniversary. So who gets the Patience Award on this couple? <laughs> okay, well, we'll go with that. Note also, uh, please keep the family of Marlis Hankey in your prayers. Marlis unexpectedly went to be with the Lord this past Tuesday. If you go to the back of your bulletin, you'll see a number of other announcements. One that I didn't get in there, a special thank you to all who brought about the Surviving the Holidays uh, program. 21 people from the area were part of that um, in terms of coming and checking it out. So that's really a ministry to those grieving. Thank you very much. Also note the other announcements. The new member class continues today, and there will be another class in December starting on the 6th. The Thanksgiving meal is listed there. There is a sign-up sheet for that. All of the details you need to know, just read. Note also the men's breakfast on the 5th of December, along with the ladies' craft bazaar. They are asking for your help. If you'd like to heat up your kitchens for a while, they would appreciate that. And, uh, but the things you need to know are right there. The yard sale planning meeting comes up on the 9th of December, and we're going to need a lot more volunteers uh, for that, because a lot of our friends from Canada probably might not make it down by that time. Many are interested in the angel tree and have supported that for years. Take a look at that last page. Everything you need to know to understand how to work with that program is right there. Also note that our Thanksgiving Eve worship is on Wednesday at 6 p.m., and that will highlight the, um, the special hymns, the favorite hymns that you have chosen. As we worship this day, we celebrate our Lord's Supper. Our Lord's Supper is open to all baptized believers who trust in Jesus as Savior and who seek to learn to live with him as Lord of all areas of life. At this time, it is served in a slightly different way. As you come forward, you'll receive the wafer, the body of Christ in your hand, and then you will have the option of choosing from a darker color liquid in a disposable glass, which is wine, or a lighter colored, colored liquid, which is white, white grape juice, in other words, the blood of Christ. We do ask that you would kindly take time to fully fill out the front side of that little communion slip that you see in the bulletin. Note at the bottom, there is room for prayer concerns, and our people have a lot to pray about at this time, so please include yours there, and we'll get them to the prayer ministry later today. On the back are a number of other options that may be of interest to you, but also note that there's a space if you need the office to be aware of something. If you put it down there, there's less of a chance that I'll forget it by Monday morning. So thank you for that. Please stand. We continue our worship on page four in the folded bulletin, as together we affirm that God is good. All the time. All the time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us silently confess our sin against God and one another. God of the covenant, you have never failed in your promises to us, but we often fail to be your faithful people time and resources on things which do not give life. We doubt our abilities and hide our light away from the world. We flee from your call when it doesn't appeal to us. Forgive us and call us back to your sustaining love. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn on page 6.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, God of wisdom, your word lives within us, within our very souls. Make us living scriptures by which the world can see your love clearly demonstrated and shared. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the worship carol of which you will take part. Good morning. So if you put your bulletin away, take it back out. It has your participation part. Um, um, We're going to sing the first verse with the choir. Then the gentlemen in the choir have a solo part. And then I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go like this and give it to me. Okay.
The lesson today is from Jeremiah, chapters 36 and 31. In the fourth year, the king of Jehoiakim, son of, of Josiah of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel and Judah and all the nations from the day I spoke to you from the days of Josiah until today. It may be that when the house of Judah hears of all the disasters that I intend to do to them, all of them may turn from their evil ways so that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote on a scroll at Jeremiah's dictation all the words of the Lord that he had spoken to him. And Jeremiah ordered Baruch, saying, I am prevented from entering the house of the Lord, so you go yourself. And on a fast day, in the hearing of the Lord, of the people in the Lord's house, you shall read the words of the Lord from the scroll that you have written at my dictation. You shall read them also in the hearing of all the people of Judah who come up from their towns. It may be that their plea will come before the Lord and that all of them will turn from their evil ways for great is the anger and wrath that the Lord has pronounced against this people. And Barak, son of Neriah, did all that the prophet Jeremiah ordered him about reading the scroll, the words of the Lord, in the Lord's house. Then the king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and he took it from the chamber of Elisha the secretary, and Jehudai read it to the king and all the officials who stood before the king. Now the king was sitting in his winter apartment. It was the ninth month. And there was a fire burning in the hearth, a brazier, before him. So Jehudai read three or four columns. The king would cut them off with a penknife and throw them into the fire in the brazier until the entire scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. Now after the king had burned the scroll with the words that Baruch wrote at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it all the former words that were in the first scroll, which the king Jehoiakim of Judah has burned. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. They shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 145 responsively. I will extol you, my, king and, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the liturgical year in the church, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. When the hour had come, he took his place at table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that, that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. A story written by someone known as Daddy's Little Girl. One day, my mother was out, and my dad was in charge of me. I was maybe two and a half years old and, and had just recovered from an accident. Someone had given me a little tea set, and it became one of my favorite toys. Now, Daddy was in the living room, and he was engrossed in the evening news, and just when I brought him, or brought Daddy, a, a cup of tea, which was just water. And after several cups of tea and lots of praise for the yummy tea, my mom came home. My dad made her wait in the living room to watch me bring him a cup of tea because I was just the cutest thing. My mom waited, and sure enough, I walked down the hall with a cup of tea for Daddy, and she watched him drink it up. Then she says as only a mother would know, did it ever occur to you that the only place that your daughter can reach to get water is the toilet? <laughs> you have to wonder how that father felt when he heard news that he really, really did not want to hear. But I guarantee you that it was not as destructive as the king in our first lesson for this day, King Jehoiakim. You see, King Jehoiakim was a fairly self-absorbed king, and he ruled a fairly self-absorbed nation. Their thought, their main thought, was that they had the right system. Since they were in the southern kingdom in Jerusalem, that they had the temple there, that they believed God lived in that temple, and all they really had to do was go through the forms of worship, follow the rituals and the procedures, the routines of worship that they'd been given, and all would be right between God and themselves. And then along came this depressing prophet named Jeremiah, who was known as the weeping prophet. And he brings news of doom and gloom. And Jeremiah was a prophet during this time, and, and prophets contrary to public opinion now, were not people who came and somehow foretold the future or predicted the future, but they were sent to warn the people and the nation and the king of the future, what the future would be like if the people did not change, if they did not repent. So Jeremiah wasn't real welcome. He was basically persona non grata in the in the palace and also in the temple. He could not appear before the king. And you see, King Jehoiakim, because of this, hated the prophet Jeremiah because he was delivering news that this king did not want to hear in any way. Well, think about it for a second. What do you do when people tell you things that you do not want to hear? Hmm? We well, brought this... Uh, same question up in the Bible studies this week in all three. And some said they just kind of walk away. Some say they listen, they don't listen, and yet they still hear the words, so you know they're on their memory somewhere. Some people refuse to address that kind of situation until they go away and, and think about it, consider what portions may or may, or may not be true for them if there was something they could learn. Well, 
As I said, the prophet Jeremiah could not take the words directly to King Jehoiakim, so he had a scribe named Baruch write all of this down on a scroll. And then he sent Baruch to read, first of all, these words of warning to the people in the temple, hoping they would pay attention. And then after that, he said, go, and if you see people coming in from the surrounding towns, read these words to them also with the hope that somehow they would hear and they would repent and that God's anger would not come to pass. Their punishment would not come to pass. Well, Baruch did everything that Jeremiah told him to. And then King Jehoiakim intervened and went into action and sent Jehudi to get the scroll, this thing that was causing people so much upset when they heard what was on it. Now, King Jehoiakim was sitting in his winter palace, or in his winter apartment, if you will. Perhaps he wasn't able to come to Yuma this winter either. But he has this nice little fire in his fireplace. So it's warm, and it's cozy, and things are pretty okay, except for the fact that this prophet Jeremiah's scroll is floating around, filled with warnings of destruction. So King Jehoiakim has his servant Jehudi read three or four columns of this scroll, and then he slices it off with a penknife and throws it in the fire. First book burning, perhaps. And it's only after that that, uh, well, they did it until the entire scroll was read and burned. It was after that that the prophet Jeremiah instructed Baruch to get another scroll and write down everything that he had heard the first time, write the Lord's words down again, all the words that were on his first scroll so that they would be preserved. One word that is used later in that text is the word covenant. Now, in biblical times, covenants were bonds. They were bonds made with blood involving life and death. Very serious, very serious things. They weren't casual agreements. You see, the term to covenant literally means to cut. If you go back to Genesis 15, you'll see there about how God made these nice promises about a lot of offspring and a lot of land to Abram and Sarai. Well, Abram wanted a guarantee on this. He wanted some assurance that if he left all his relatives that somehow God was really going to come through on this deal. So God told Abram to go get a heifer and a goat and a ram, all three years old, and then a pigeon and a dove. And Abram brought them, and then he was instructed to cut them in half and arrange them, the pieces apart, facing each other. And so he did that. And after he does this, in the darkness, there is this flaming pot and the torch, the smoking pot and the blazing torch that appear and pass between the pieces. Literally, that's seen as the presence of God. In other words, God himself was making this covenant. He was swearing by walking between these cut of, cut of animals he was making this pledge to Abram and his wife, a pledge of death, really. It meant that the covenant maker, that God would suffer the curse of death if he did not keep his oath, if he did not deliver on what he had promised. In other words, we see another example here of our God being fully committed to us and to our cre his creation. Now, as we've become familiar over the last months and years, really, with the more of the accounts of the Old Testament, the history of Israel, we've seen again and again and again how Israel broke the covenants. It was human nature, or at least fallen human nature. They would, Israel would have situations where they were told not to intermarry with the people of the land because they would bring their own rituals and religions into things. And they would turn around and do it. 
Israel was told to trust in the Lord above all things, and yet they would turn around and go and make treaties with other nations to somehow think that would protect them. Israel was told that there was only one God. And they went along and adopted gods from different people traveling through the land that they met. And like Solomon, who had, well, way too many wives, he, you know, they had all these temples built on the hills. And so to, these were there to serve foreign gods or not true gods, and that was offensive. And whenever these things happened, God would send a judge, or he'd send a prophet, or he'd send even a foreign nation to go and to confront Israel's disobedience and distrust. Now, if you look down at the bottom of today's text, I'd invite you to do that and look at chapter 31, uh, verse 31 to 34 there, you will see that the prophet Jeremiah, after prophesying, prophesying all this doom and gloom, he now gets to bring a fair, farly, far different message. You see, Jeremiah gets to bring a message of hope for the future, of a coming time when God was going to make a new covenant with all the people, one that would really include the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And God, Jeremiah declares that God would make a new covenant with the people, even though God knew that the old covenants, best based on obedience, just plainly didn't work because the people were always unfaithful. In the new covenant, God is going to make, take a new approach, as we see. The new covenant is going to be one that's going to be inclusive, it will extend from the least to the greatest, and it will be based on forgiveness instead of just simply sacrifice over and over again. The new covenant will be based on God's word becoming known to the people. The new covenant will be divine, in other words, not human, because God in this covenant is always the actor. Take a look at that paragraph. Note that God says, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, hence the idea of tattooed heart. I will be their God. I will forgive their iniquity. So the new covenant isn't based on something of a God being far out there somehow that they had to appease, but a God who is deeply, deeply relational, a God who is personal. In the old covenant, there was sacrifice after sacrifice, which really didn't take away sin, but it pointed to the time of the coming one who would be the sacrifice for all sins. In the ninth chapter of the letter to the Hebrews, the 15th verse, we read, For this reason Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Perhaps as you've attended different worship services in person or online during the worship institution, you've heard something like this, that Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant. Let that stand out in your mind. It's the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. So as we take time this morning again to participate, to receive this new covenant in Christ's blood, the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation, we are freed. Freed and forgiven and blessed with good news that hopefully resides in us to be taken wherever we go so that we can proclaim, indeed, Christ is King every day. Please stand for prayer. Holy Lord God, we do give you thanks that we don't have to sacrifice animals, that you have given the ultimate sacrifice, but to keep that 
in our minds and hearts as a symbol of your ongoing love for us and our need to take that good news to all people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of the day is found in the bulletin on page 13. We join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Your word stands fast in spite of those who have disregarded, disrespected, or distorted it over the ages. Continue to inspire us through the Holy Scriptures and other revelations of your timeless truth, God of the covenant. As we pause this week to ponder all that we are thankful for in our lives, May your grace and faithfulness be first on our list. Bless those who travel and be present in our gatherings with loved ones amidst joy and occasional friction which arises at such times. God of the covenant. God of all creation, you have made everything good. But we do not always treat it with the care and respect it deserves. Foster in our hearts a love for this planet which strives to protect and nurture all that you have made. God of the covenant. Heal all who have had words used against them as weapons of dogma, hatred, and abuse. May they know instead words of reconciliation and atonement. Send your healing spirit to those who need it, especially those suffering and grieving or serving the needs of others at this time. God of the covenant. We give thanks for all who have gone before us in faith. 
and those who bore witness to your gospel of love in our lives. May we follow in their footsteps as signposts of grace that help others find their way to you, God of the covenant. We pray for all of our mission congregations, Araby Acres in Yuma, Crossroads Lutheran in Santan Valley, Maricopa Lutheran in Maricopa, San Juan Batista Lutheran in Tucson, and Vida Nueva Lutheran in Glendale. We also pray for our local partners in mission, Faith Lutheran Church and Christ Redeemer Anglican Church. We also pray for our care ministries that serve the needs of others, such as Christ Care, Stephen Ministry, Grief Share, and Mental Health Ministry. May they reach people in need, God of the covenant. Together we pray, Lord, help us, your believers, become disciples who worship regularly, love unconditionally, listen compassionately, speak truthfully, act justly, endure patiently, forgive mercifully, give generously, serve selflessly, invite constantly, pray fervently, witness unashamedly, and live worthily. Receive these prayers as parents hear the cries of their own children and answer us in your time, in your way, for the sake of Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offering response. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, whose rule is gentle and whose way is peace. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it for all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion assistants will come forward at this time.
the body of Christ broken for you, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Depart in peace to serve the Lord. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 The body of Christ broken for you.
please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you safe in his grace until everlasting life. We pray, O God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table amid the cares of this life. Strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. A word of thanks to our live stream guests for joining us this morning. If you have prayer concerns, please send them through the website and we will pass them on. Also, there is a time of fellowship following this service in the fellowship hall to which all are invited. And I believe the ushers are handing out some cards at the end of worship so that you might be able to invite people to any of the coming worships. Always remember that God has created you and has a purpose for your life every day. Lord, help us remember if you are not dead. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him in abounding thanksgiving and the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Christ is sending you. <laughs>